Welcome back to the house channel. Today we are giving you guys three tips on how you guys can increase your power on the lanes. Send some nasty bird dogs. Insert clip of bird dog. All right, so tip number one is gonna be increasing your rev rate. And the reason that that is so important is because the more you can increase your rev rate, the better pin carry you can have down lane. And then on top of that, the more you're able to adjust and move your feet and play different parts of the lane. So we're not just teaching you to increase your rev rate, we want you to add that to your game, not replace what your game already is. We're now gonna show you guys the way a lot of amateurs kind of struggle with it. And then we're gonna show you guys how the pros do it. And then we're gonna wrap it up and give you guys a drill on how you guys can help increase your rev rate faster. So the way a lot of amateurs like struggle with getting their rev rate up, I see in the two-handed game especially, they don't really cup their hand as much as they should, which means like when they get into their backswing, you'll see their hand look like this. Their hand will be either all the way on the cup and they'll just be like shoveling the ball down the lane as opposed to getting their hand a little more underneath it and cupping it as they release the ball. This is the way I see a lot of amateurs struggle. I'll give you guys a full motion here and then I'll show you the way I do it and the way almost every pro does it. My hand is basically locked into this uncupped position instead of getting my hand to be a little more dynamic and cupping and uncupping through the bottom of the swing. I'm essentially pushing the ball down the lane instead of rolling it off of my hand. So now I'll show you the way a lot of pros do it, including myself, which is gonna be cupping my hand and then rolling it off my hand and uncupping it upon the release. And now here's a drill that I like to do to help work on keeping my hand underneath the ball. I'm gonna go to the back, I'm gonna grab a 10 pound ball. I prefer, you know, 10L, the large finger holes. So this, this applies whether you are one-handed or two-handed. I'm gonna put two fingers in the ball and cup the ball, almost like a Tom Doherty release where you're gonna kind of rest that ball up against your forearm, make sure your hand is all the way underneath it. And then we're just gonna stand at the line, swing it and practice going from this motion straight down and try and uncup the ball as quick as possible. So go from a cupped hand position to an uncupped hand position and try and create as much revolutions on the ball as we can. So much like this. Just get into a, a semi-athletic pose at the line, swing it, and then... And I talk about this a lot when we're doing drills. Once again, I don't care what happens on the lane. This is all about working on either my physical game, maybe my hand position, just like this one, is working on our rev rate. If it goes in the gutter every shot, that's fine with me. So one of the tips to this drill on top of just, you know, trying to get your hand underneath it, if we were to cut the ball in half right here, you wanna make sure that your fingers are so far underneath the ball that they're past that equator mark of the ball. So if we were to cut this ball right here and say the equator's right here, we want the fingers to be just like they are right here, past the equator by as much as you can. So the ball's right now obviously resting up against my forearm. And my fingers are all the way past the equator. Get one. Let the big dog eat, you know? So once you've mastered it with the 10 pound ball, what I like to do is I like to move up in weight just to try and challenge myself a little more. This is also something that you can do at home with a basketball, a soccer ball, or even what I like to use my Eileen's bowling buddy. Also, when you guys are working on increasing your rev rate, an important thing is now that you have your hand cupped underneath it a little bit, to make sure that you wait on the ball and you don't pull it down and try and get your hand underneath it that way. So make sure that even with your hand underneath it, your timing still doesn't change. All right, so tip number two 
to increasing your power is going to be increasing your ball speed. In my mind, speed is the biggest factor when we talk about increasing your carry percentage. I'm gonna show you guys how amateurs do it and kind of, you know, the wrong way to do it, and then how pros increase their ball speed, as well as a little drill to help you guys work on increasing your speed. So the biggest factor when I talk about like the way that amateurs increase ball speed, and maybe they do it the wrong way, is they just increase muscle. And by that I mean they, they pull it down from the top of their swing, they just try and throw it either with their arms or their back or however they try and throw it, they just increase the muscle instead of trying to keep the muscle that they use the same and just try and increase the speed at which they do it. So this is kind of the way that an amateur would do it. I'm just going to show you myself really pulling it down from the top. Getting real herky-jerky out there. So that would be like an amateur, the way an amateur would increase ball speed. It's a little out of control. It's a lot of muscle involved in it. So that's the way an amateur would do it. And now I'm gonna show you the way a pro would do it. And I'm gonna explain how I change my ball speed. So how I find my starting point, you know, I take about four and a half steps back from the foul line to find my place right around here at that first set of dots. And when I'm gonna increase my ball speed, I'm just gonna take a full five steps. So I'm gonna go another half step back on the approach. So what that does for me is it allows me the room to walk faster and to use my legs a little bit more, which is the way that pros increase their ball speed. It all comes from your legs. And for me, that means pretty much just walking faster. So the faster I walk, the faster the ball is gonna come off my hand. For me, the swing just picks up on its own. It already speeds up a little bit and not with muscle, but just by timing. So even though my feet are moving faster, my arms naturally gonna move faster and that doesn't mean it's with muscle. The pace of my entire approach and my entire game speeds up, including my arm swing. The driving force behind that is just my legs. And let me show you how a pro maintains everything, staying on balance and hopefully throws a good shot. But as you see, the balance stayed the same, the head movement stayed the same, the arm swing stayed the same. It was just my feet and legs that moved faster towards the line, and thus resulting in an increase of ball speed by one mile an hour. One mile an hour is a lot, and that's what we, I talk about all for your game, right? Like, if, you're, if you throw at 15, after week one, don't try and throw at 19. Try and hone in on just gradually increasing. So now I'm gonna give you guys some tips on how you can work on increasing your ball speed and some drills that I like to do. So I know a lot of people like complain about when the lanes are dry or they haven't been oiled. And for me, that's like a perfect time to practice throwing the ball harder. So what I like to do, either find a drier pair of lanes if you can, or just play further to the outside where they are gonna be dry in your house shot. This is kind of how I started and how I learned how to throw it harder. I stood in my normal spot right on that first set of dots, and then I slowly took little baby steps back, maybe six inches, maybe, maybe 12 inches at a time, where I took little baby steps back until I felt a little out of control, and then I just practiced at that spot where I felt a little uncomfortable until it became comfortable, and then once again, I'd take another maybe half step back, six inches or 12 inches, and where it felt a little uncomfortable, and I just practice again until it felt comfortable. You basically push your own limits a little bit. You know, you just, you increase your speed just a little bit and then make sure you practice until that feels comfortable. It's, it's exactly like lifting weights. Maybe I curl a 15 and then once that gets pretty easy, I pick up the 20 pounder, I start curling 20s. And then once that feel easy, I pick up the 25. So it's gradually increasing until it feels normal and it feels a little easier to do. So for me, I did feel a little uncomfortable there, but even me, like I've practiced at all of these ranges. so. A lot of the times when I step all the way to the back of the approach or all the way to the front, I still feel pretty comfortable just because I've practiced these things so many times. But even for me, that's a little uncomfortable. It usually takes me a couple shots to get that to feeling normal. And now, I'm going to throw as hard as I can. Pray for me. That's now a full two miles an hour above where like my normal speed is. For you guys, a good goal would be a half mile an hour at a time. You know, as you set your goals, say, hey, I, I currently throw at 15.5. Today, my goal is to throw at 16. And you just take those baby steps back until you can get to 16 miles an hour. And just, again, repeating it until it feels comfortable. Brooklyn? Got him. That's what happens when you practice when they're hard. Give me my purple hammer, pocket, all day.
So we've talked about the, the two tips, speed and rev rate. And my third tip for you guys in the overall tip is, you know, make sure your fundamentals, one, they're good to start, and two, make sure your fundamentals, as you practice these things, your fundamentals can't change. You can't start flying off balance all the time, or all of a sudden, your arm swing have a huge hitch in it to try and get more rev rate. So the key to all of this is keeping your fundamentals the same, nice, solid fundamentals, and then on top of that, making sure your balance and everything else also stays the same. So gradually increasing and gradually increasing your speed and rev rate are the key to not getting your fundamentals out of whack and also to making sure that you have a solid physical game going to the line. Thank you guys for watching this video. I really appreciate it. And I want you guys to comment down below and you know maybe throw a feed down below where we can see all of your guys' comments on your best tip that you've ever gotten, whether it's increasing rev rate, increasing power, or just another really good bowling tip that you guys have got. Throw it down below. I'm gonna read them and reply to some of them. And I know a lot of other people find that helpful. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And hopefully this video helped you guys out even just a little bit.